This paper? Yes. I have none. All right. Uh, so this is the journal topic which we're going to do uh, in a little bit. I'm going to ask you to think about today's lecture and some information that was significant for you. And we'll practice making a connection with that. Um, but before we get to this topic, I want to review a bit from our discussion two weeks ago, different ways we can make connections. Okay? And I also want to review some really important language that we can use to cite a source. Okay? So let's start on this side. Uh, it says, journal writing, choose one significant idea from today's lecture. Uh, first explain the idea. And I said here, don't forget to cite your source. So who, who was the source of today's information? Doctor. Dr. Jeanette, Dr. Jeanette. Now, when we're writing an academic writing, are you going to focus on first name or last name? Last, last name. name. Last name, right? So when you cite the source, uh, please don't say, you know, Jeanette said, right? even, if, even if she introduced herself that way, okay, for academic writing, make sure the focus is on the last name. Okay? Um, the source could also be according to the lecture. According to the lecture, or according to a lecture I attended today. Okay, so the source can be either where did it come from, or who did it come from. After explaining the idea, we're going to move to this very, very, very important step in academics, and it's explaining well, why? Right? Why do you think it is significant? And a really useful way to explain why is to make connections. Okay. So we have talked about two different ways to make connection. One is the source, right? Well, who said it, right? Or where does the information come from? The other is what type of information is it? Right? Um, so let's review together. There are three different sources of information. Um, what are they? Text to text. Text to text. Okay, what's the other one? Text to self. Text to self. And uh, the final one. Text to world. Okay. So I want to start with this one. Um, I think this one is often the most difficult. But when we say text to world, we mean make a, a more global connection. Make a deeper connection. Okay. Because sometimes what happens is we'll like read an article, and then we're thinking about how can I make a connection. And we might say, oh, yeah. Like, almost exactly same thing happened to my friend. And then you write a whole paragraph about how, like, the situation in the article is, like, 99% the same as your friend. And basically just copy, like, repeating exactly the same idea like the article. Okay, on one hand, that's a good job of saying, okay, I saw, I found a connection. I made the connection. <laughs> but it's not really advancing the argument. It's not really saying anything except, I understood this article, something like this happened to my friend, let me explain, and it's like almost, you know that kind of bird that talks? Oh, yeah. what, what's the name of that, that bird? You can, you can train it to like talk. I don't know. You say something, it says something? No. Yeah. You know that one? Yeah. You know it in English? No. no. <laughs> in, in English, it's called a parrot. And, and, and we also use, the parrot is the name of the bird, but we use that also as a verb in English to mean copying directly. Right? Because how do they learn? Well, you teach them to say, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, and then they learn, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. So if you parrot something, it means you're taking something and then just like re-saying the same thing. And it's a big problem sometimes, and that's why text to world is so important, because we're saying, well, who cares, right? Why does it matter? We're talking about this more deeper global connection. So I'm going to write that here. Deeper global connection. Okay? And so all this stuff that we're going to talk about in a minute, that's where that's really helpful, I think. I think this stuff is helpful to explain that deeper global connection. Okay. Um, let's come back to these two. I want to give you a couple of situations. Tell me if it's text to text or text to self. 
Um, what if I explained something that I read on the internet? What would that be? What kind text. of connection? Text. text to text, right? So text could, of course, include magazine, newspaper, internet. What if I talk about a movie that I saw? Text is text. Yeah, it's, it's also a type of text. I mean, for this situation, we can say, OK, even a movie could be kind of like a text to text. Um, what if I talk about my friend? Yeah. Right. So again, self doesn't only mean myself, right? It's myself or anyone I know. You know. Oh yeah, that reminds me of my neighbor. The situation happened to him. This is why it's significant. This is why it's similar. But then this is why it matters. This is why it's really important. So we're going to be talking more about that today. Um, help me remember about these different uh, areas that we might refer to. Social. S is for social. Health. 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 Education. Economic. Economic. Political. Psychological. Good. Now, of course, you know, there might be some similarities here, right? Psychological could be related to mental health, right? So there might be some overlap. Um, I also want, oh, economic could be related to political, right? So there could be some overlap, okay? So I'm aware of that. This is really just a tool to help you make some of these connections. I would also say that on an essay, you never want to focus on more than two, maximum three of these. Okay, so please understand my meaning very clearly. I don't want you on your essay to try and talk about why something is socially significant and health significant and education and no, two, maximum three of these areas could be a nice way to get to a more global connection. So we'll come back to this and, and, and be using it to make connections. Okay. Um, the next thing I'd like you to do is please take out your notebook and I'm gonna ask you to copy these five sentences. Um, and these are about our grammar that we did this morning, right? Comparing Switzerland and Bolivia. I want you to copy these, and then we'll talk about the significant language as a grammar. Review. So go ahead and put that in your notebook. Make sure everyone can read those. Um, oh, Eva in the back. So, uh, Tim, can you read number one, please? According to the article, Okay, thank you. Yeah, so about the pronunciation, guys. So, it's Switzerland and Bolivia. Okay, Switzerland Bolivia. Uh, Grace, can you read number two, please? Olivia, good. Yes. Uh, Calvin, can you read number three, please? The author says that these are that fair standard of beauty. Okay, thank you. Uh, Marvin, can you read number four, please? The author says that Switzerland. Olivia. Official. Official. Uh, Jacqueline, number five, please. The article is about similarities and differences between Okay, thank you. Yeah, so please copy all five of those sentences, and then we'll talk about the language.
take another minute, please, and then we're going to talk about some of the language and punctuation for these examples. Okay, guys, uh, please take out the grammar exercise uh, that we did this morning. Uh, so for this purpose, this is our article, right? This is the original information. And that's what all five of these sentences are based on, this article and this author. Okay? <clears throat> what I'd like you to do first is talk about n number one and two, these two sentences. I want you to talk with a partner and explain how are these two sentences similar okay? and how are these two sentences different. I'd like you to talk about that with a partner. How are they similar and how are they different? Just talk about one and two. Looks like everyone's finished writing. Um, so yeah, three of you are talking. Uh, Calvin, can you please talk with these two guys? Uh, can the two of you please talk? You two please talk. Uh, Angie, oh, I'm sorry. No, Angie and Calvin, you guys please talk. You two talk. Can the three of you please talk? Can you and Cece please talk? Alan, I'm gonna ask you to. No, you and Cece, you and Cece talk. Thank you, guys. So please talk about it. how are one and two different and how are they similar? Yeah. Yes, how are number one similar and how are number one and two different from each other? Just comparing those two. Well, in this context, or So let's go ahead and come together. So just talking about one and two. Um, Kelly, can you explain, please, either a similarity and or a difference? 
Uh, this, so the second one is the, the author's opinion, right? Um, as as the writer of the sentence, I'm reporting on the author's opinion. Yeah. But this one, why why don't I use the quotation marks for this one? Okay, so I'm reporting on the author's mind, maybe reporting on the author's thinking. I heard a couple of you saying something like, yeah, so right, we call this a paraphrase. Um, as paraphrase. As uh, your classmate told us, a paraphrase, it's really important to note the paraphrase is the author's idea, right? It's not my idea. It's the original author's idea. But I'm not copying exactly the author's words, right? This one I am copying the words. Did you find those exact words in the article? Yeah. Right. Which line can we see those words? Or which paragraph, first of all? Okay. Okay. First paragraph, the third line. Right. So it says many interesting similarities exist between these two countries. Um, Instead of these two countries, I've put them in here. And why, why, did I, why did I put them in here? Why did I change the word a little bit from the original? Why uh, grammar? To make the right grammar and to make it clear for the reader, right? Because if I just say between the, both countries, the reader has no idea, right? So because I have made a slight change to the original language, I'm going to add something, okay? I'm going to add parentheses here, okay? The purpose of the parentheses are this is something that I change from the original to make clear for the reader, or as your classmate said, to make the grammar accurate in the sentence, okay? So it's a direct quote, but I had to add some information to make it clear for the reader. Right? Okay, so in your notebook where you just copied the sentence, please add these parentheses. Okay, because that's not from the article, that's from me. Okay, so you please add those in your notebook. Okay, uh, next, you're going to talk to the same person uh, about number three. I want you to talk to your same partner and just explain the parentheses. Why did I use the parentheses for number three? That's the first question. And then I want you to compare four and five. These are both paraphrases. But I want you to look closely at the grammar and talk about how is the grammar different in four and five. Okay. So explain the parentheses in three, talk about the grammar in four and five. Please talk to your class. Okay, so Michael, can you please come over here? <laughs>
Uh, so let, let's talk about these. We're going to start with number three, and I'm going to ask you actually first to read number three, and then to talk a little bit about the parentheses. Why were they used? What they were. Yeah. Um, Alan, can you please read number three? So, can you explain why why did I, as the author of this sentence, why did I put in this parenthesis? You the sentence from the article. Yes. Okay, very good. Guys, uh, where, where can we find this information in the original article? Paragraph 2, line 3 and 4. So according to this article, so the original article says, uh, you know, Switzerland has a higher standard of living. So I have this, Switzerland has a higher standard of living, okay? But again, uh, it might not be clear to the reader, higher than, than what, right? So now it's my responsibility to make it clear to the reader, so I would add this, this information. Now look, if this sentence is appearing later in my summary, right? if it's clear to the reader from this early information, if the reader already knows I'm comparing Switzerland and Bolivia, then I don't have to add this. Okay? But if it's not clear to the reader because of what is earlier, then it's my responsibility as a writer to make this both factually and grammatically complete. So again, those parentheses, that's a sign that I'm adding something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have to add the quotation marks because they Oh, excuse me. Yeah, excuse me. The, the, thank you. The quotation, yeah, thank you. The quotation marks need to be on the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so excuse me. That's a good punctuation point. Okay. I also want to say about the grammar, this word, okay, is optional. Okay. Mm -hmm. That word's optional, but you might find it helpful to include it because then you can remind yourself after that you must have a subject, and you must have a verb, okay? and that's a very, very, very common mistake, right? So the author stated Switzerland has a higher standard of living than Bolivia, correct? Or the author stated that Switzerland has a higher standard of living than Bolivia, okay? So you have the option of including this. Um, there's one more punctuation, yeah, sorry, I made a mistake with the quotation mark, there's another punctuation that's missing from number three. Comma. 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 Very good. Where would you put the comma? Okay, good. Yes. So, if I have know that, then I put a comma here after the reporting verb. However, 
if I include that, then I would put a comma here. Okay. So a comma separates who or what is the source. The comma separates this information from the quoted, quoted information. Okay, uh, finally, number four and five, um, we have uh, some differences in the grammar. That's what I wanted to focus on, on here. Okay. Um, Charlie, can you please read number four, of course? Uh, article explains that Switzerland and Bolivia both have more than one equation. Okay, thank you. And you'll notice this information is from the article, but it's not a direct quote. It's my words to paraphrase, so I don't need to put in quotations. I still need to cite my source, but I don't need to use quotes because it's a paraphrase. And uh, Renjan, can you read number five, please? The article is about the similarity and differences between Swari, Glenn, and Bolivia. Okay. So obviously, the information is different. I know that. But I'm not talking about the information. I'm talking about the grammar. So what grammar differences do you see? Do you have a question or a question? Uh, why you didn't use the number four uh, comma after that? Okay. So uh, the question is related to here. Um, we, we do use a comma before quotation marks to separate it. However, we do not use a comma for this is a complex sentence with an embedded clause, and you do not use a comma here. It's for quotation. Okay, that's a good question. Uh, so getting back to the grammar differences between four and five, there are a couple differences. What's something that you notice? Grace, what's something that you notice? Number four. Okay. Yeah, good observation. So after that is a complete sentence with the subject, Switzerland and Bolivia. What's the verb in this clause? Have. 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 Okay, good. So Switzerland and Bolivia are the subject. Have is the verb of this clause. So a subject and a verb. Okay. And it, a complete sentence after that. Uh, what about in number five? Number five is a Good. Yeah, it's a noun phrase. Similarities and differences, noun and noun, between, preposition, noun and noun. There's no verb. Right? There's no verb. It's one long noun phrase. Okay? So please be very careful when you're using these forms. It's a very, 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 very common mistake. So if you have the article is about, that's a noun. It could be one word. Okay? Today I went to a lecture. The lecture was about the internet. Complete. It's finished. The lecture was about internet usage. Okay, usage is a noun of use. Okay, that's correct. The internet, or excuse me, the lecture was about benefits, challenges, safety, and addiction of internet usage. Correct. There's no verb, right? So that noun phrase could be one word, one word long. It could be very, very long. It could be a string, a chain of nouns but there will not be a verb, it's not a clause. Okay, so please make a note that whenever we use that, that is about plus noun, okay, very important. Uh, is there any other difference that you notice in the, in the grammar between these four and five? What about the verb tense? What do you notice? Simple present and simple past. So we've talked about it before, but I want to remind you that in summary writing, you may use simple present or you may use simple past. Okay? But it's your job to be consistent. Please do not write one sentence simple present and the next sentence simple past and then present and past. No, you choose one and you're consistent throughout your summary writing. <coughs> What is the verb tense in number one? Simple, Simple present. present. Now here I'm taking it directly from the article. Okay, So I don't really have a choice in the matter. Uh, what about number three? What's the verb tense in the main clause? Simple, 
Simple past. The reporting verb that I chose, I'm using past tense to report. Okay. Uh, here we have simple past, simple present. So I want to get some practice with, with those different ways. Okay. Yes? Do you see number three or the simple past? Yeah, great point. So in the, in the direct quote, it's coming from the passage. So I'm going to borrow the author's uh, verb tense. Uh, but I could accurately write, the author states, okay, or the author stated. This is my choice. This is not my choice. That's the author's choice. I'm reporting. No, that's a really good point. Okay, guys, what I'd like you to do uh, now is think about the lecture that you just attended. I want you to write three uh, true sentences about the lecture you just attended using any three of these forms. Okay? Now, of course, we're going to make some changes, right? Uh, instead of according to the article, how would I change that to be appropriate for today? Okay. Yeah, so we have two options here. We can say according to the lecture or according to Dr. What's her last name? Thank you. Or Orsione. Okay. So we're going to change that. But okay, so you replace it according to the lecture or according to Dr. Orsione. Make sure that you have a subject and a verb if you want to use according to. Instead of the author stated, how might we change this? The author stated that. How might we change this to be a good fit for today? The doctor, the professor, uh, the presenter. Can I say, or only state? Absolutely. The uh, doctor, the professor, the presenter. Okay, or you could just use her last name, Ursioli stated that. Okay. Uh, finally, number five, the article is about, no, the, the, lecture. the lecture. The lecture. Okay. Again, you can say is about or maybe was about. You just went there. Maybe you feel more comfortable using past sentences. Uh, so how many, how many sentences are you writing? No. Three. You choose three of these forms, right? Three true sentences about today's lecture. Go ahead and do <coughs> so choose three pieces of information and make it decision.
looks like many of you are finishing up. So let's take one more minute. And again, uh, please use three different forms. Right? It's a good chance to get practice on different uh, language structures. Okay, guys. Uh, so I'm going to ask uh, to hear from some of you. Uh, when you listen, please tell us. Please tell us uh, which structure uh, your classmate used. Right. So if I say, for example, uh, the lecture was about internet usage, you would say, oh, five. That's the structure of five. Uh, so, Ten, please uh, read one of your examples, and we're going to listen for the, the number. Well, that's my example. Read another example. <laughs> I just wrote that. Okay. According to the professor, if you cannot live without your phone, you are a Okay. Uh, according to the professor, if you cannot live without your phone, you are addicted. It's changed to adjective. Uh, which uh, form did she use? Two. That's number two, right? That according to, and she did a good job because it was followed by according to the professor. Do you have a comma, comma, and then a subject and a verb? Um, a nice. Please read one of your examples. The lecture was about how the internet can take all your time. Okay. Which uh, structure did she use? One more time. A little louder, please. The lecture was about how the internet can take all your time. Which number? Five. Five. It's number five. Um, so, <coughs> uh, the grammar is perfect, and you did something interesting with that. Uh, read it again for me. The lecture was about how the internet can take all your time. Okay, so very, very interesting. Uh, guys, please pay attention very closely because this is a huge grammar mistake that often occurs. Okay? As I mentioned earlier, if we just said is about or was about, it must be followed by a noun phrase. Okay. Uh, your classmate did something very clever. Maybe she had a whole sentence she wanted to say. She wanted to say a subject, the internet. She wanted to say a verb, can take. Okay. But she knew that if you use was about, it needs to be a noun phrase. So what did she do to make it so she could use that whole sentence? What did she do? How, right? She added this word, and that allows for her now to have a subject and a verb. If she didn't have the word, it would be wrong. Because she has the, verb, the word, it is now correct. So you might add that to your notes, right? If you want to use this is about or was about, 
but actually you have a whole sentence you need to say. We can insert how plus subject and verb. Okay, um, Calvin, please read one of your examples. According to the lecture, according to the lecture, uh, there are many internet which uh, okay, Did you write three sentences? Yes, uh, according to the lecture. There are many benefits, challenges, challenges, safety, and addiction. Okay, so according to the lecture, there are many benefits, uh, challenges, and addictions. Uh, we would need to say like rela safety related to the internet. Okay, so okay, so here we see example number two. Okay, that's fine. All right, um, what I'm going to ask you to do, you're going to talk to the same person. I want you to do two things. Number one, uh, share with them the three sentences that you wrote. After you have read those examples, I want you to not write, but just talk about what was one idea that you thought was pretty interesting or pretty significant or pretty surprising. If you had to choose one thing that you learned today, what's one significant idea that you Right okay. So first, compare your three sentences, and then talk about what was one interesting or significant thing I did. You can talk to the same people. Uh, yeah, it's almost perfect. Everything except the very end of the sentence. You really have an addiction problem. Yeah, an addiction problem. A N N addiction problem. Yeah, it's a good complex sentence. I wrote, I was going. <laughs> yeah, so this is what's it's actually called a compound noun. Right? Addiction and addiction. Yeah, addiction is the noun, and uh, addicted is the adjective. But uh, in this case, it's a little tricky because we actually know what's called a compound noun, which is an addiction problem. It's a noun noun combination. An addiction problem. So Charlie, what was something you found significant from today's lecture? <laughs> 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 Uh, 
I guess also uh, the issue of safety, security, and the privacy as well. I don't know if it's something that was significant about today's lecture. Okay, guys, um, so let's go ahead and uh, we're going to move forward. And I want to revisit uh, an idea that we mentioned before in academic writing. It's the idea, do you remember this like uh, shape in, in, in academic writing? What does that signify? Okay, that's a kind of the funnel method. We talked about that. So what is this idea? So moving from general to getting more specific, yeah, we talk about that as I like call it often the funnel method. Um, this applies also to summary writing. So if I'm looking at these examples on the board, um, I might start with something like this and first introduce a topic in a very general way, right? So my very first sentence might be something like, uh, you know, today I attended a lecture on the, on the campus um, in, where, where was the lecture? A, A314, period, the lecturer's name was Dr. Ursioli, period. The lecture was about uh, the internet, period. So now I have in a very general sense what, what the thing is about. And then I can move from there to explaining a little more specifically, well, okay, the internet, wow, that's a huge topic. But now be a little more specific, well, like what aspects, right, what areas of the internet were discussed. Right? But then when I get really to the end, to the most specific part, now it's my job to say what I want to focus on. Right, so one of your classmates said, uh, you know, like one idea that I found was especially significant um, was that the internet has both uh, positive and negative aspects. Okay. So now he's told me as the reader, okay, this is the one area of focus. This is the uh, significant idea. And now the rest of the essay he would explain about why, why, why is it significant and give examples. Uh, another one of your classmates said, you know, that in my opinion, the most significant idea was the issue of, how did you put it, privacy? Of safety. In my opinion, the most significant idea was, was the issue of safety. So now the rest of the essay is going to be all about this idea of safety, because he told me that's what he's going to focus on. Right? So I want you to uh, do something. I want you to take out your blue book, okay? And I want you to start 
And we're going to do this as a journal writing, but it's going to be kind of a controlled journal writing because I'm going to direct you step by step how I want you to get through the information. All right? So please take out your blue book journal. Yeah, yeah, if you don't have it, just put it on a paper. I know I have to report it. Put it on a paper and we can staple it in later. Okay, guys, please write today's date. It's December 1st uh, on the top of the entry. Uh, so what I'd like you to do now is we're going to complete just, uh, we're, not, we're not here yet. We're going to start over here and in two to three sentences uh, introduce the topic. So the topic in this case is the lecture. It was a lecture, not an article. It was a lecture. Uh, make sure you include the name of the presenter, who presented, and the main idea of the whole, the whole lecture. Okay? So we're starting really general going to become more and more specific. So go ahead and do that now. We'll take about five minutes.
Hey guys, good. Uh, so I'm seeing some good examples of consistent verb tense usage, right? So yeah, if you're talking about, I went to a lecture and the presenter, the presenter's name was, the lecture was about, and so I'm seeing some very good examples of consistent verb tense usage. Positive and negative impact. Um, you'll pluralize impacts. Impacts. Okay. Okay, uh, guys, let's continue. Now we're going to go to the next step. So, as we move from more general to more specific, the next step would actually be like a summary, what were all the points of the lecture. You're not going to write a summary right now, but I would like you in bullet point like this, so you could write one word for each. So what are the important points? So if you think about everything she said today, what were maybe four important points she mentioned? Okay. Do not write full sentence, just kind of like brainstorming. You know, safety, uh, privacy, uh, I don't know. I wasn't at the lecture. So what are four like main points, important points? Maybe write down here. Yeah, write it, write it in your journal. Yeah, but not a full sentence. Yeah, kind, of, kind of like an outline. Like an outline. Lecture kind of follow a similar outline like the title. Yeah, that's okay. This these sentences are what we would use for Another minute. It seems that it seems like she followed the same outline, like the title of the lecture. And it seems like a lot of you wrote benefits, challenges, safety, addiction. So we don't need to spend too much time on it. So l let me ask let me ask a few of you. What do you have here? So like Jacqueline, what did you put for your points? Privacy, addiction, judgment, and 
benefits. All right, Marvin, what did you put? You had the same ones as that. Uh, Angie, what about you? Privacy, addiction. Uh, compulsion. So it sounds like, is that something kind of related, like addiction? You can't stop doing it. Compulsion. Okay. All right, uh, Aaron, what did you have for you? Benefits, challenges, safety. What was the first one? Problems? Okay. Purpose. Purpose. Okay. Yeah, the purpose of something. Why? Why are we using? Okay. Fine. Uh, moving on. So now we've moved from general. We've kind of outlined the main points. Now I want you to choose one idea from today's lecture, and now we're getting to these directions. Choose one idea from today's lecture. In one sentence, indicate this is your thesis. So you might use language like, something that I found significant was bum 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 bum. You might say, although I agree with the professor that bum 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 bum, comma, I think she's wrong about it because. Okay. You might say, um, although there were many interesting points, the most important idea, in my opinion, is, okay, so think of one sentence that you could tell the reader that this is now my focus. I'm not going to talk about all of this. I'm going to choose one aspect and get really focused. So please write that one sentence now. Your focus statement is also a thesis. So if we use this phrase, one significant, you need to say something like, uh, you have two choices. Okay? You can say, something that I found significant is, or one significant idea is that. Good examples of thesis statements. 
it's not the significant idea, it's one instance. A significant idea or one significant idea. One significant idea You guys, uh, look on the board, please. A lot of you are using the same sentence uh, to introduce your idea, which is fine. But please note the grammar, OK? Uh, one significant idea is, if this is a phrase you're using, you may choose that. You must be followed by what? Sentence. A sentence, a subject, and a verb, OK? So please check your grammar. Make sure you don't have a fragment or an incomplete sentence. Although these all are important, the most significant idea to me is challenges of internet use. Yeah, good. Remember that if you use although, you don't use but. Although and but have the same function. Take away but. Okay, guys, please finish up that, uh, that focus statement. And um, when you finish that up, I want you to take out this paper about making connections and providing support. Okay, we're going to use this as a brainstorming tool. Okay, so we're going to do uh, two separate, let me pass this back, uh, two separate brainstorming uh, practices. So what I want you to do is look at your significant idea, and we're going to use this like a model, but I'm going to ask you in your journal, you're going to make a drawing similar like these. Okay? So in your journal, Okay, in your journal, under this sentence, one significant idea is... Please write this uh, in your journal. So what we're doing now is this. We are starting this process of explaining why the idea is significant. Okay, so we're going to do two separate brainstorms. Uh, each one is going to be for four minutes. So what I'd like you to do right now is take four minutes and do not write full sentence. I just want to see if you can come up with any ideas in your brainstorming where you might be able to make a connection, a text-to-text -text connection about your significant idea. Okay. Or can you make a text-to-self connection? Remember that self can be you or someone that you know. Okay. Don't write full sentence. Just coming up with some ideas and brainstorming them. What about a text-to-world connection? Digging deeper, a more global issue. Okay. Don't write sentences, just take a couple of notes for that. Okay, so we're going to take four minutes, and this time, please fill in as much as you can for this first brainstorm. Okay. Go ahead and do that. Okay, so do it in your journal.
Let's take one more minute, please, and then we're going to go on to brainstorm two. Please take notes. Is there any uh, personal experience you have with that? If yes, you can write. You can just write me. You can write my friend. And for text, you can write New York Times. Just to remind yourself, oh, there's an article I know about this. So you're just taking notes. How would you make a connection? Yeah, variety of ideas. Okay, guys, uh, let me interrupt. Uh, just by a show of hands, please show me how many of you have a text to text example that you feel like you could write about for this significant idea by a show of hands, text to text. 